early mornings are so great. Four o'clock in the morning. Welcome to the great unfolding. I'm thankful to be here. <clears throat> I'm thankful to God that I'm still here and doing what I'm doing. The service in the Lord, which God has called me to do. Um, I thought about this this morning. I thought, you know, this year has been a different year for me in the sense of uh, God raising me up and uh, giving me blessing beyond blessing as far as the truth is concerned and to be able to share it with you. Um, this is my most passion of my life is to be able to share truth and to be able to give out the evangel that God has placed in me. His spirit operates in me and through me to do this. Um, that's the message that goes forth is God's message, not my own, not in the sense of me being anything, me doing anything, this is God's will. Um, I also want to say thank you to all my brethren for supporting and loving me through these times. Um, there have there have been enough contributions to get me through December, which I'm thankful for. You can also still contribute if you want. This it helps. It helps in the time that. Uh, I'm living in right now as far as being unemployed and things like that is concerned you're all well aware of it you heard my shows in the past and this is not a plea for anything this is just saying that yes if you want to contribute to the work you can and you can still do that through my website you can go on the home page there and you scroll down and you can hit the PayPal button and that's where you go directly to where you can contribute and Give a gift out of your heart like that is so great because it does support what I do. Um, so I'm thankful to all of you. I'm thankful that you're here at 4 a.m. in the morning with me and listening to me, hearing these shows of what I do and where I'm at. I found this article this morning again and it's just like, wow. You know, it's the fulfillment of God's purpose, his ultimate purpose in completing the all in all. So this article is called The Completing of the All in All. This is gonna take a few days to do. It's a pretty good extensive one and it's gonna give you wonderful truth. That God may be all in all. What a wonderful passage of scripture. First Corinthians chapter 15, 28. We all know it well, those who are members of Christ's body and believe it. And, and walk in it and believe it and fully that God is going to reconcile his whole universe. And that means the whole, not just human beings. I'm talking about the whole creation. That's what that refers to, that he may be all in all. That is the goal of God's purpose. And we cannot deny him one whit of the glory that he desires. Yet to leave anybody out of that final all would be to do just that. <clears throat> all in all, does not, this, does not this expression occur somewhere else in the scripture? Of course it does. Surely it rings a bell in our minds. What about the last verse of Ephesians chapter 1, which relates specially to the ecclesia, which is the body of Christ, and is declared as the complement by which he, Christ, is completing the all in all. We remind ourselves of the context of this passage, beginning in, at verse 20, in accord with the might of his strength, which is operative in the Christ, rousing him from among the dead and seating him at his right hand among the celestials, up over every sovereignty and authority and power and lordship, and every name that is named, not only in this eon, but also in that which is impending, and subjects all under his feet, and gives him as head over all to the ecclesia, which is his body, the complement of the one completing the all in all. Notice the connection between this scripture and the one we have already considered in 1 Corinthians 15. In both passages, we learn that God is making all to be subject to Christ. And in each case, it is equally clear 
that only God himself is excluded from this subject, from this subjection. Therefore, the second all in both cases is equally comprehensive. When it says all, it means all, and not some or many or even most. And the first all in this Ephesian scripture is also emphatic. In the Greek, it has de the definite article before it. The complement by which the all in all is being completed. If words have any meaning, this scripture is telling us that somehow the ecclesia, which is the body of Christ, is to be used by him to bring about the completion of whatever is needed to make creation ready for handing back to God at the consummation. That is why God is, is to have such glory in the ecclesia and in Christ Jesus until the very end of the eons of the eons. But how does this come about? The meaning of complement. It is the word complement which provides the key. The concept of, of the complement as the term is used in connection with man, with Christ, and with God himself, throws a tremendous flood of light on the meaning and function of the ecclesia today and in the eons to come. The Greek word pl pleroma, translated complement, in the concordant version means that which is put in to fill or that which fills up. Suppose for a moment you have made a cake and you cut and you cut out a segment to see what it is like. The cake is then compl incomplete. And the only way to make it complete is to put the slice back. The slice is the complement, which when put back makes the cake complete. No particularly. It must be the slice out of the original cake or substitute slice out of another cake will, do, will not do, as, as it wouldn't. <coughs> it has to be completed. Now, God has given us in the scriptures a wonderful illustration of how we are to understand this word in its application to the ecclesia, which is the body of Christ. Paul himself in Ephesians 5, when speaking in reference to Christ and the ecclesia of the secret, which he, had, he described as great, quotes a passage from Genesis 2. This chapter in Genesis describes how God formed what is termed in the King James Version, quote unquote, a helpmeet a, or suitable for Adam, but which in the concordant version is termed a helper as his complement. Without going into a lot of detail, we notice that immediately after announcing this decision, God caused all the animals and birds to pass before Adam to be named. And that's in verse 19 of Genesis chapter 1. <clears throat> now, what is the significance of this? Primarily to show that in all of these, God does not find a helper as man's complement. Why not? Because all of these were of, di of a different creation from man. And the complement must be of the same kind as the one who completed, complemented it is, whose complement it is. But then what did God do? He, made, he had made Adam of the soil of the ground. Did he form Eve in the same way? If all that was required was a helper or companion for man, he could not have done just that. But no, the helper must be man's complement. Like the slice of cake in the illustration, the complement must first be removed from the whole so that it is intrinsically part of the whole. It is essential that the complement should be out of the one who completed complement, whose complement it is. This is a basic requirement which must be thoroughly understood. We cannot emphasize it too strongly. It is true of man and his complement, woman, it is true of Christ and his complement, the, the ecclesia, which is his body. It is true of God himself and his complement, Christ. And so God caused a deep sleep, a stupor to fall upon Adam. And when he was in this unconscious state, God removed an organ. It wasn't a rib. It was an organ. It was an angular organ. From the original Hebrew, yeah, you can look it up. Not a rib, for man 
has still his full quota of ribs, but an organic part. And around this, he formed a woman and brought her to the man. And Adam knew at once that this was part of himself. And he said, this was once bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh and shall be called woman. For from her, her man is from her man is this taken. <clears throat> the latent compliment. In the seventh verse of the second chapter of Genesis, we find a brief description of the forming of the human, Adam, from the soil of the ground. It is not until the 22nd verse that the woman is given a separate identity. In the intervening period, however short or, ho however, short or however long that it may have been, the woman had remained latent and unseen in the man. For from the first, God had created humanity, male and female, and had called their name Adam, both in the day that they were created. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. In exactly the same way, from the moment of Christ, for the, from the moment that Christ, as God's creative original, or the beginning of the creation of God, Revelation chapter 3, verse, verse 14, from the moment that he came into being, the ecclesia which was to become his complement remained latent and unseen in him. But in God's eyes and God's purpose, it, will, it was surely there. For he gave us in Christ Jesus the gift of grace before ever the eons began. As he tells us in 2 Timothy 1, 9, for there we read, in accord with the power of God who saves us and calls us with a, with a holy calling, not in accord with our acts, but in accord with his own purpose and the grace which is given to us in Christ Jesus before times eonian. So we were chosen in Christ before the disruption of the world. So think about that. That's an amazing thing right there. That's an amazing, amazing, amazing choosing of God in Christ. We were already in Christ. We weren't known yet. But during our lifetime, we were called. And now we're known. We're seen in Christ. This is why we can say there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because we were chosen. And once we realize our calling, we know that there isn't any condemnation. No matter what you do, no matter what you think, no matter what you say, as a member of the body of Christ, there's no condemnation. So take that with you today, knowing that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Very important to understand that. If you want to have any kind of peace in this life, yes, know it. There's nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with Christ. And we are in him. And we were chosen in him before the disruption of the world. So there we were. And here we are. Still working, still doing service in the Lord. And knowing our place in Christ. And being assured of that. You need to be assured of your place in Christ. Never doubt that you are a member of the body of Christ. If you have a realization. I love you all. Have a wonderful Tuesday. We will see you tomorrow.